All right, guys, some of you are really struggling with the idea of creating modular assets. So in this one, we're going to go ahead and go over the basics again, but we're also going to talk about the one centimeter grid, why it's important. So uh, let's just jump into this. We're going to create a plane. OK, I'm going to turn the grid on so you guys can see it. Grid floor here, it's at one. OK, we're going to do absolute grid snap. Hit R, Y, hold control, rotate 90 degrees. OK. So uh, let's just delete these vertices. Go into edit mode, hit tab, X, delete vertices. Press A, G, Z, bring this up. There you go. So you could think of this as like a plane axis, right? Like this is, this is a one-dimensional wall, if you want to call it that, right? Uh, the moment you extrude it up, you hit E and Z, you bring it up, you now have plane face, right? It's a quad. That's really all it is. Uh, it's a 2D representation of a wall now. Right? We're, like, we're drawing a wall. We're like, hey, this is going to be a wall unit. It's this measurement, 2 meters by 3 meters tall or something like that, right? Okay? This is something uh, that's kind of messing all of you guys up because when I talk about offsets, I'm saying that I'd like to do 10 centimeters. Okay? There's a reason for that. Uh, 10 centimeters, Okay? It's half the size of a cinder block, roughly. It's actually like 20, uh, 22 centimeters for a cinder block. So half the size of a cinder block would give you basically the idea of a building, a structure, a wall, right? Uh, because this would be just half of a wall. So if I shift D, duplicate it, press R, Z, and rotate it. Control. If we were to do something like that, you could say these are two walls back to back, or it becomes maybe one single wall, just like cinder blocks or something, right? So just keep that in mind uh, when I'm talking about those offsets. This is what's going on. So when you see these other videos of guys creating uh, modular units, a lot of times they're doing both walls at the same time, which isn't isn't undoable. I'm going to press G, X, hold control. This one's not on the grid. Okay. G, X, hold control. Oop. I guess I didn't have those lined up, huh? Right. Fix that real quick. Okay, so there's your 20 centimeters. Center blocks are supposed to be like 22. So you lose a little bit of uh, depth there, perhaps. But you get the idea. So that's a wall, right? And then what I've been showing you guys is this. Just half of that. And if your your wall, you're not planning on seeing any of these other sides, you don't need them. So you'll eventually call them out. So you're left with an offset plane, right? It's just offset off the grid. All right now, where does the 10 centimeter grid fall into the or the one centimeter grid fall into this? This wall here, technically, it doesn't matter where you place it. It's either a thick wall or a thin wall. It really doesn't matter. Generally speaking, though, um, you're only going to pull it out so far. Right? It's only going to go out so far. So you might have like a um, a thick wall, and then you might have maybe this is like a blast concrete door or, or a blast concrete or something for some bunker. And inside of it, maybe it's the same thing. You could just use the same unit, but maybe it's got like a little wood frame or something in it for some reason. I don't know. Whatever the case, I have a thin wall. So you can do this. So when these were combined together, if they were combined together and it was a single unit, you can have something like this, so like an exterior side, interior side, um, but you wouldn't necessarily need interior faces, right? You're not going to see them, so why would you need those? But Or this edge on the side, you might not need it. All right. So that's that's all I'm trying to show you here is how this works out, right? That's why I did it kind of granular like with the uh, just the plane, but it was pretty rough for some of you guys. So I wanted to show you that and um because this doesn't actually have to line up on anything, right? Like it doesn't have to snap to the grid. It just has to be in line with the next unit next to it. Maybe whatever integer you want, you could vertex snap them together or whatever the case. As long as it starts and stops right here, right, on this line, on the grid, you'll be all right. That's why usually you want things stopping at certain areas, because if I want this to repeat going up, it needs to probably match the grid This in this respect, right? But this isn't necessary over here. Okay, and so uh, where does the one centimeter fall into this? Let's change the scale of the grid to a um, 0.1. Right. When we do that, we can now see that this becomes 10 centimeters. Right. 
So we go down even further, 0 0.01. Oh, sorry. Maybe it doesn't go in the 3D view, doesn't go down further. I thought it did. It's just really small, I guess. Can't see it really far down here. Yeah, it is down here. Okay. So one centimeter grid now. Because it's kind of hard to always snap to um, just random integer values, right? And if you're creating another wall next to this, maybe you do want them to line up. You can always snap to the one centimeter as well any, on any given object, right? Even a small little props you can do this. You can even go smaller if you wanted. Um, but it's just going to help you in the creation process to be like, hey, I'm going to end up making another unit at some point, right? And um, this unit, maybe you started it independently, so it was a different size, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to pull it out to here. Maybe I want it to uh, do this, and then this, and maybe I want it to meet up with that one. You can see it doesn't even look like we're snapping. It's so small. This is why guys don't generally or typically um, make one, one centimeter uh, modular systems, right? So if you see these kind of don't line up here, that's, I think, a fault of just my original model. Try that again. Right. They do need to line up at some point if they're going to run into each other. And also notice this isn't on the grid in the front here, like not on the 10 centimeter grid. So we have to identify that we want to move it on... Uh, the y-axis basically but now they actually do line up instead of like vertex snapping them all together all day long we don't have to because we're working at such a small grid it's okay um, if you set this to the 0.1 meter setting 10 centimeter right you can still do this it's just that when you hit g and then say like x and you're moving and you hit control it'll snap to 10 centimeters which is nice uh, but when use uh, control and shift together and now start snapping at one centimeter what's going on there Let's try it again it should be anyway so it is you check in the uh, orthographic views remember just hit alt while orbiting you can see it's sometimes it's even hard to get it to uh, snap to the one centimeter so that's all you're doing guys it's not really that that challenging when you start pushing things in and setting up units, separate that. Some loop cuts. Press Y to rip a face. So I didn't separate it as an object. It's a face. You have a mesh machine. When you rip, when you use Y, it brings up the mesh machine add-on. I, I set it to Shift W instead, so I can still use Y. Right there. Sure. Let's do. Control I real quick. Ah, same object. Let's do this. Shift H. Control I. Control I inverts, right? Alt H, bring it back. So you can hide things in edit mode as well. But you, you're starting to see where this is going, hopefully. Because this, if this was an interior wall. Alright, separate it actually. It works just fine, but. This is a window. Maybe you want a window area, right? Let's go ahead and snag these real quick. Separate them. So the window unit plug would be a little bit be more individual like, right? Uh, so now you can come in here and you can figure like uh, maybe we'll duplicate this. Control M, middle mouse click, flip it over, right? Push that back in a little bit. Hold control and shift. There we go, we got that going on. So the plug itself for the window, whenever you make it the frame for it and all that, it would be the same process. You'd probably want to flip it over. You see that goes off pretty far, right? So you can even make your windows modular. But um I don't think it's usually too useful unless you're trying to create a bunch of different windows with the same pieces different sizes and this um, origin point for this is way over here control period place it there 
scroll period, go into edit mode, and select this whole back section here. So now your window could be, that could be the center point for it, right? So that could be part of your plug anyways, something like that. And this wall needs to go in. The interior wall, because some of these interiors have like that little, it's almost like a huge window seal, right? It's like just a large bench. Almost. This is why you play with different sizes when it comes to the walls. Sometimes you need those things. The window itself, it, maybe it goes there, but maybe it even goes all the way up here. Further. Preferably snap this one to 10 centimeters. See there, that might work out a little bit better. This little section here, if I separate the face, I just press Shift D, duplicate, P, separate selection. Now, create that little window seal on the inside. You could even do the same thing on the outside, maybe, but you probably would want your plug to incorporate this into it somehow. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, I guess we'll do it over here. Quick. Using machine tools to do the quick uh, face rip. Just speeds things up. And now I got like an exterior window seal. See how they're different? Okay. Got a tapered wall. Maybe the inside of the room tapers as well. well Problem we have right now. We don't have anything that matches. The reason why you do them kind of, you think of them as independent or separate is because that sometimes, let's see, this is on the grid. So we're going to use, um, we're going to use the active element here. This one, I'll put it on the grid, the GX. Just shift clicking. We're basically selecting one of these ones. Active. So turns a highlighted color or whatever. So we can put it exactly on the grid because this is on the grid. And now they'll all line up and be proportional. Um, but you might want to have. Sometimes you might want to have it like dip in here like this. That might be something you want. But maybe you want like a different interior unit. Like we're not worried about the exterior right now, right? Maybe this interior unit. Um, see what we do with it. Let's bring this back forward real quick. Bevel this. Only want to bevel this edge or chamfer it or whatever. Maybe this one does something a little bit different. I guess we're uh, extruding. I have to delete that. that. This this is a good time to use. Um, Blender has extrude manifold. Usually this will work on very flat surfaces, but sometimes if it's a little bit more challenging, the Machine Tools Deus Ex version has Punch It, which it does a little bit better of a job. Punch It actually will let you go all the way through the mesh as well. So just keep that in mind. So like. It has to be a manifold mesh, though, meaning no holes in it. So if I have any holes, it doesn't do it, right? Unfortunately, I don't have back faces, so I can't use it. But maybe, like, right there, we do that. Clean it up a little bit. So merge in at last, suppress it in, merge at last. Yeah. Or two different styles here, huh? Maybe this is, um, I want to put the origin point right here, temporarily. Y rotation and scale equals, otherwise you might not have to. If you're not using uh, machine tools, shift S cursor to select it of whatever you have selected, and then go into object mode and set origin to the cursor. That's like the easiest way of doing it. Okay, there we go, we have one. And like that, perhaps, this unit, we could do the same thing. 
So we have both exterior and interior going on. Now we can have another unit like that. See, it just doubles the size, basically. Exterior here. Separate that. This is what I call clamshelling, by the way. So not much about one centimeter in this one, huh? So T separate selection. These are the same unit, more or less, which I screwed up. <laughs> I separated it wrong. All right, let's try this again. An old D to do an instance. So if I ever wanted to come through here and update this somehow, I can't. Grab all this, press E, X, that out. You can update a lot of stuff real quick like that. All right. The weird things about like little pieces like this sometimes is that You'd think you could bevel that and it would make it look nicer, but then it bevels this one as well. So if you're okay with having a little seam there like that, it's probably not such a bad deal. But might not give you the result you want, right? So sometimes you can just create a new little tiny modular piece here. This got this one will probably want to snap into the 10 centimeter grid at the corner here, perhaps. But you can see this is where having things on the grid can also help, right? You don't always have to, but it's some kind of grid, some one centimeter grid or something. Because now you could just say, like, make a little cap here. I'll select it all, press P, separate selection. Origin point for this one would be press control period, hold control, snap it over real quick. Do it again. Gotta zoom in to change the grid size, the snap grid size, anyways. Uh, orthographic views. Now, Get that result right so now you have a capper basically control period turn that off and uh you texture it up for each side so you have like a right side and then you might have a left side one right so that agrees and boom right on It's on top of it, so we don't we don't place this one there, right? Place it right here. Yep. Yeah. So basically, you can do this over and over and over and over again for all kinds of different little modular units. Like you can literally use the same textures, but just have to UV map them, um, and then kind of rearrange them kind of unique and all that. So, because they're instances, of course, we can do whatever we got to do, and then we'll do it over there. So maybe this is like a um, second floor section as a little example. One of those wire cages out here. That edge and that edge, press F and press F to fill. If you bevel something like this, guys, if you can, let's try merge. Okay. Bevel something like this, it's going to give you that weird bevel. You, sometimes you can get away with it, but sometimes you can't. You see how the thickness changes throughout the shape? So take a look at doing um, fonts, right? Like creating fonts. Human eye really notices stuff like that for some reason. So tweaking it manually is oftentimes preferable. Like it doesn't even have to be proportional or correct as long as it looks pleasant. But in this situation, we get a better result if we just simply went and did something like um, KCA, cut through here. We can line that edge up to 
or KCA, turn the knife tool on, make your cuts, and then space bar to do it. But we could probably line these up a little bit better if we they just push them to the grid or something. See how that works. I think I missed the bottom section. You have these two holes, you just press um, AF. Sometimes you can press AF, um, sometimes you gotta select them first, so Alt Shift Click on F. Grab these two sections, Control E, Bridge Edge Loops. Okay, it doesn't look right right now. You add a number of cuts. We can change the smoothness so it looks a bit more appropriate. All right. And make it look a little little bit nicer in my opinion. I have to play around with that idea a little bit before you can kind of get things going the way you want. You can see this one's short, so I might have might have might have I might want to not go to the grid here necessarily. But instead you could use like a reference cube perhaps. Because you're looking for kind of like a right angle and um you'd say like maybe these are both not on the grid. See how the edges meet up right here. So this this would be a little bit more appropriate, I think, in this area. Now we could do the uh control E bridge edge loops. I just basically wanted to see the lines where they met. Over mesh machine real quick. So you can start creating whatever it is you need to create out here. Your loop cuts, do an extrusion down like that, or you can inset it, extrude it down. You do it a little bit different than that sometimes, but do things like that. You can steal mesh, by the way. Take like this whole section and just steal it. You do the same over here. Select all of that, take that, get rid of it. Duplicate it, control M, middle mouse click, and pull it down. It mirrors it. It flips the normals, but you can Alt N flip them back. Yeah, how about that? Now, split up to about even. M merge by distance. It may have got them. It did. All right, sometimes you just got to align them with machine tools. Um, but you can do like a little drop down if you want this, right? Something like that. Start building out your shape or whatever it is you want to do. Could be like a flower pot holder or just like some kind of weird clothes rack or fire escape, so whatever. So it only takes a little while until you have um a whole building put together because the whole building can be broken down into like a couple unique walls perhaps, a pillar or two, a couple trims. You have a modular building, guys. It's really that simple. Um that's it for this one and I'll be doing another one of these here soon so um hopefully this one helps all right check it out in the next one all right take care